morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're here to discuss changes to the Local Authorities Election Act, which will be introduced later today. Just a reminder, this information is embargoed until the bill is tabled by Municipal Affairs Minister Casey Madu. Uh, with us is the minister, uh, as well as Kathy Maniego, Executive Director of Municipal Capacity and Sustainability for Municipal Affairs. So with that, I'll turn it over to Minister Madu. Thank you, uh, Tim. And Thank you, everyone, for joining me this afternoon. It is my pleasure to announce Bill 21, the Local Authorities Election Amendment Act, which I will introduce in the legislature later today. As you know, the previous government updated this act in 2018, following the last round of local elections. But after our government took office, we heard the complaint that the act still had many significant gaps that needed to address. To inform our changes, we held an extensive consultation. We held targeted meetings with voters, community advocacy groups, school boards, municipalities, and municipal associations. One of the biggest concerns we heard was that the rules heavily favored incumbent over challengers. The changes we are seeking to make are about leveling the playing field so that the best candidate for the job, regardless of where they stand on the political spectrum, are running and winning. These changes will allow political newcomers to run more meaningful campaigns. This will undoubtedly lead to more competitive local elections and increased voter participation. There are a number of things we are doing to achieve these goals. We are expanding donors' ability to support candidates. Until now, donations for campaign contributions were capped at $4,000 per donor. Municipalities told us this was impossible to track across the province. Now, our Albertans will be able to donate up to $5,000 per candidate, and they will be able to support as many candidates as they would like across the province. Candidates themselves would have more flexibility as well. They will be able to raise $5,000 outside of the campaign period up, to, up from the $2,000 limit that was previously in place. And self-funded candidates would now be able to spend up to $10,000 of their own money on campaigns. There will also be changes to advertising rules. We are protecting the free speech of advocacy groups like unions and corporations and other third parties, by allowing them to voice their support for candidates, giving them a political voice they did not previously have. Candidates, municipalities, and school boards will also be free of administrative burdens that elections pose. For candidates, disclosure of donors would now be done after election day, so they can focus on what matters most running effective campaigns. And for municipalities and school boards, there would no longer be a need to open trust accounts to hold surpluses, as all surpluses over $1,000 would have to be donated to the charity of their own choosing. This last rule has an added bonus. Previously, candidates running for the first time would be up against incumbent who had funds from previous elections. Now, with this change, all candidates would start from scratch and play on an even field. These are common sense, practical changes, and I am proud that they are being supported by two of our municipal associations, AUMA and RMA, and I do want to thank them for their support. Many of these changes were informed by voters, advocacy groups, local leaders, including mayor, the mayor of Calgary. These changes, even the playing field for our burdens of all political strife. This is good for our local elections, it is good for our democracy, and it is good for our Alberta. With that, I'll be happy to take your questions. Great, thank you, Minister. Uh, I will ask reporters to please limit themselves to one question and one follow-up. Operator, can you please put the first question through? Our first question comes from Janet French of CBC. Your line is open. 
Hey, thanks for taking my question. Of course, I'm chewing my lunch. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, you're talking a lot here about leveling the playing field, but by expanding the number of candidates and the amount of money that people can donate to candidates, would it not uh, then increase the influence on who the candidate knows? And if the candidate knows more rich people, does that not increase their chances of having success in the municipal election? No, I, I mean, I don't think so. And I, and I don't think the premise of that particular question is correct. Uh, after all, we, we, we fund elections by donation. And we want to make it easier for people to be able to donate to uh, the candidate of their choosing across the province without, and, and by so doing, uh, removing the, the, the administrative restrictions and burdens that we heard from municipalities uh, that they would like us to address. And that's exactly what we have done. Great. Janet, did you have a uh, follow-up? Some comments made earlier this year by Andrew Knack, who's an Edmonton City Councillor. He had expressed some concern about the speed of the consultations and the changes right prior to the 2021 municipal election. Um, why are you determined to have a 2020 implementation date for the next campaign rather than waiting till 2025? And because we heard concerns that the changes that were made by the previous government in, in 2018 uh, did not adequately address the concerns and the issues that were raised um, the period leading up to that, those changes that were made in 2018. I think it's important, you know, that we ensure that when voters and, and, and stakeholders have concerns with respect to um, our electoral laws, um, given the fact that we do have time to implement them, uh, this is 2020. Um, I, I think it, it, I mean, it was the right thing to do uh, to uh, take up those concerns, investigate them, and we did that, and within, uh, with speed, uh, I'm, I'm no doubt, but we gave folks an opportunity to uh, be heard, and we heard them. Excellent. Operator, can you put the next question through, please? Next question comes from Rick Bell of the Calgary Sun. Your line is open. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Just a uh, quick question. Um, in the past week, uh, the mayor of Calgary talked in very strong terms using words like disrespectful and disingenuous. Um, he does not want the equalization referendum to take place at the same time as the city elections, municipal elections, which, of course, will happen next year. Um, he even says it'll mess up the city election and could have an influence on media coverage and voter turnout could be influenced. Well, what are your thoughts on the mayor opposing having the referendum on equalization in 2021 at the civic election time? You know, uh, thanks, Rick, for that question. Uh, obviously, uh, on this particular point, I do not agree with the mayor of Calgary. Um, the fact is that uh, although this, the issue of referendum is something that is being worked on, no decision has been made yet. That said, if you take a look at uh, the, the various municipal elections going back, where, uh, I mean, going back in time, uh, there has always been that opportunity to hold non-constitutional, and I will also add constitutional referendums during municipal elections. So this is not new. This is not a new idea. We didn't just invent that. Various jurisdictions in this country and around the world um, have used the opportunity of a municipal election to hold a non-constitutional referendum. So again, um, I, I, on this particular point, I would, I would trust um, the people of Alberta, the voters, uh, who wants a referendum on, on all kinds of issues. And I, th I think they are sophisticated enough to be able to weigh in on a non-constitutional referendum or constitutional referendum alongside uh, a municipal election and municipal issues. Thank you, Rick. And if I could have a supplementary. Go ahead. Um, so what do you, but, but what do you think about the fact the mayor says, no, do not have a, uh, equalization referendum at the time of the city election because that will somehow ruin the somehow ruin or taint or influence the city election it, it, you know Rick Albertans are fed up I think with equalization uh, and they want to have their say if there was one thing that I, I heard loud and clear during 
the 2019 election as a candidate, it was that particular issue. And I have always been clear, voters are not a nuisance. You know, they are, they, after all, they ought to be the point of our municipal elections. And I would argue that anyone running for political office who is afraid of voters is in the wrong business. But that said, I, I hear the mayor of Calgary loud and clear. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a matter for the provincial government, not for the, not, not for the council in Calgary to decide. Great. Thank you, operator. Can you please put the next question through? Next question comes from Colin Gallant of Medicine Hat News. Your line is open. Um, hi there. I just had a point of, I guess, clarification. The surplus funds that will have to be um, turned over to charity or, uh, or, or in, the, in the changes, does that happen this? Does that, does that require to happen on September 1st? Or will it take effect for the campaign funds raised for, uh, it, it, for the election in 2021? Like, so, I mean, are, are incumbents going to have to clear their bank accounts in two months? So this bill, if passed by the legislature, would come into effect on September 1, 2020. And uh, that would then set the process for the surplus money to, to make that required transition. And they would have up until um, 2022 to complete that, that transition. Uh, I think, if, I mean, if I'm correct, your question is whether or not someone, uh, I mean, the implication of your question is whether or not someone with a surplus right now um, uh, is able to use that particular fund for the next election, and, 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 and the answer is no. Because the, 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 one of the intent of this uh, amendment is to make sure that by 2021 that the, level, uh, the, um, that the ground is leveled uh, so that incumbent and newcomers will be on the same, on the same level. Great. Colin, did you have a follow-up? Well, well I'm, not, I'm not clear. So, so surplus is left over from the upcoming campaign will have to be donated after the 2021 vote? It would begin from the it would begin before the 2021 vote and complete by 2022. Okay, great. Thank you, operator. Can you please put the next question through? Our next question comes from Keith Green of the Edmonton Journal. Your line is open. Hi there. Good afternoon, Minister. I uh, wanted to ask a little bit about some of the moves to uh, reduce red tape on third-party advertisers. Um, presumably that would mean a potentially bigger role for third-party advertisers during the uh, municipal elections. Uh, and it sounds, if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like you support that. Uh, if that's the case, uh, why do you feel that that is a good idea to have a, a bigger role for third-party advertisers? Well, uh, you know, Kate, uh, third parties have always had a, a role to play in our politics. And I do not want to... Um, unduly and unconstitutionally restrict their ability to do so. Um, so uh, that is the, the, the premise, the intention behind that. Uh, this is not something that is new. Um, I, and so my, my goal is to make sure that um, they continue to play that particular role without any uh, intervention or interference by, by me. And I think that is a good thing. Okay, uh, one, one follow-up then. Um, there have been, uh, I guess, speculation that uh, slates of candidates could come forward in these municipal elections that wouldn't run under a party banner, but, you know, uh, but would run together under some, some of their own brand. Uh, do you feel that any of these changes would support um, or encourage slates to come forward? So to be clear, we have not enabled political parties to participate in, in municipal elections. Um, there is nothing under the current rule, even before this proposed amendment, that will prevent candidates out there or uh, certain interest groups um, to run a slate. Uh, I, have, I mean, there's nothing I, I am proposing that is going to change that. So this is something that's already in, 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 in existence by virtue of, of, of current law. So if, if folks out there want to run a slate, by all means. Thank you. Operator, can you please put the next question through? Next question comes from Michelle Belfontaine of CBC. Your line is open. Uh, thanks, Minister, for uh, taking my question. Um, just to follow up on what Keith uh, was asking, I mean, how does this bill prevent potential abuses in the system? Like, say, for example, I'm someone who has a lot of money, and I have, a, uh, say, for example, a pro-development point of view, and I decide that I want to donate $5,000 to 
two candidates in each of the wards in Edmonton and Calgary for the upcoming uh, municipal elections uh, next year. What is to stop me from doing that? So I, I think um, the proposals that we are putting in place will actually, will actually help do the reverse. Now, we, now, if passed, more people across the province will be able to donate money to multiple candidates ac across, again, Alberta. Unlike in the past where, where a particular developer or pro-development interest group could take over an entire municipal election in one particular municipality because they've got the money to do that. Or... Yeah, but, they were limited, but Minister, they were limited before. They, they were allowed to... They, they had a fourth... Right? So, so that's, that's the current legislation. Either you donate $4,000 to one person or you donate $400 to, to 10 people. But so, so I'm not I'm not really clear what, what you're saying. I mean, what um, I'm saying is is what I'm saying is very simple. Um, donuts would have more flexibility to donate to uh, multiple candidates across the province. Uh, you know, I, I and 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 by the way, this is something that was supported by the mayor of Calgary. I mean, if you would believe that. So uh, the, I mean I didn't I, I, mean, I mean this was not something that I invented that was it was a real concern that we had uh, and that they were able to uh, uh, um, track uh, you know some of these uh, donations if they were taking place and they would wanted that to change and this was the proposal to correct that Great thank you uh, operator can you please put the next question through The next question comes from Catherine Grigowski of Alberta today your line is open Thanks for taking my question, Minister. Um, in the UCP platform, one of the promises was to remove big money from Alberta politics by imposing a $30,000 limit on donor contributions to political action committees. Um, the removal of, of political advertising seems to do the exact opposite. It removes all limits for unions and corporations. Um, you'd mentioned um, this was due to free speech. I'm just wondering why the change from the platform commitment no, we have not introduced a corporate or union donations. It's that simple. We haven't done that. Excellent. Catherine, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, so I understand corporate and corporations and unions are not allowed to donate to individual campaigns, but it, it seems like there's a loophole here that they're allowed to still contribute. Like third-party advertisers are allowed to exist outside of the election period for, for advertising. So how does, how does that not create a loophole? It, it is something that has always been there. I think we are conflicting provincial election rules to municipal election rules. We are dealing with, with third party advertising and participation in local elections. Okay, excellent. Uh, operator, can you please put the next question through? The next question comes from Dustin Cook of Post Media. Your line is open. Thank you for taking my question, Minister. Um, most of my questions have been asked, but I'm wondering if you can provide uh, the rationale for um, having candidates filing their disclosures uh, after Election Day. They no longer have to do it before Election Day. Um, and thoughts on, on how this could impact transparency before voters go to the polls. So, you know, and let me use Edmonton as an example. You know, the, the, the voter turnout rate in Edmonton has hovers around 35%. Um, and I want candidates before the election day to focus their attention on campaigning and running and, and cover as, as many grounds as possible. After all, that is what campaigns are all about. I do not want them to be worrying about pre-election day disclosure. All of that can be done post-election. And so the idea that, we, that candidates are in the midst of a thick election period and, and they're having to worry about raising money, um, door knocking, attending all kinds of political events and political activities, while at the same time worrying about um, uh, um, disclosure that they will still have to disco disclose post-election day, doesn't make sense to me. So that was the rationale behind that. I want them to focus on, on, on the subject matter uh, of, of the campaign. 
you know, what they will do uh, to, to their municipality and their residents, given the opportunity and the privilege to serve. Excellent, Dustin. Did you have a follow-up question? I do. Yes, building off of Catherine's question, I just want to confirm so the removal of the political advertising definition. Um, does that essentially mean that third-party advertising won't be regulated outside the election period from May until the election day? And, and why the move to reduce the regulations of these third-party advertisers? Well, so again, uh, again, I want them to be able to have the flexibility to be able to um, support all kinds of local issues. I want them to have the freedom, which is a constitutional provision guarantee right, to be able to uh, focus on the, the local issues in any municipality that, that, that they want to be part of. I want them to be able to support the candidate that, that you know, support the issues that are of importance to them. Uh, that those are some of the rationale behind that. Right, thank you. We'll do one more question. Uh, operator, can you please put the next question through? Our next question comes from Janet French of CBC. Your line is open. Janet, are you there? Yes, it would help if I turn my microphone on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> taking my follow up. Uh, Minister Meadow was quoted in the news release as saying, the next round of local elections will be critical for the future of Alberta. I just wonder if you could expand on what he means by that. Uh, sure, I can do that. Uh, every election is critical. Uh, it is an opportunity for us to, uh, for candidates to talk about uh, their vision for their municipalities and by extension for our province because I've always said that um, uh, our local government at the level of government closest to our people. And our province is going through a period of economic adversity right now, uh, coupled with the, the yet to be determined the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there are all kinds of challenges facing our, our province and our municipalities, you know, and I want candidates to, to be, I mean, to be able to focus on those issues. So the next election, whether provincial or municipal or federal, are going to be very critical for the future of our municipalities, our province, and indeed our country. Go ahead if you have a follow-up, Janet. Okay, I think we have one more question on the line. Operator, can you put that question through? Our next question comes from Madeline Smith of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, Minister. Just wanted to follow up on Dustin's question a little bit about um, the uh, donation disclosure um, coming after the election happens. Um, are, are you saying that not having to disclose that information pre-election will boost voter turnout? Is that the rationale for, for not requiring that? No. I want candidates to focus on their campaign and their vision for why they want, they want to be elected. Um, there are all kinds of local issues that are at play at, at municipal elections. I want them to concentrate on that. There is nothing that they are going to disclose pre-election day that the law would not require them to disclose post-election. So why do we want to have that particular red tape? And as you know, I, I have always supported a government vision to reduce red tape. That is one typical of red tape that I think needed to go. And that was supported. Go ahead, Madeline, if you have a follow-up. I, I guess, do you think that, you know, who donated to, to a candidate's campaign might be something voters want to know and might inform their vote? Mm -hmm. Um, when, you know, when they head to the polls, and now they won't be seeing that information. So, I mean, again, uh, all of that information will be disclosed, and that is why also we have added another, another uh, layer of transparency with respect to donations. We have added the requirement for uh, an engagement letter, you know, to, to, in addition to the normal disclosure that follows a post-election. But again, we have to weigh the competing interest of making sure that the issues that are important to a municipality and the residents of those municipalities are the center and front of a, a local election. 
Um, I, you know, again, the information that is required prior to the election day uh, are required to be disclosed post-election day. Great. Thank you, Minister Madhu, and thank you everyone for joining today's news conference. Once again, this information is embargoed until this legislation is tabled later this afternoon. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, everyone.